Okay, guys, today I'm going to give you a little dive into just how incredibly weird my mind is. Like, my brain, when it's designing stories, does some of the weirdest crap, and you're going to see why today. I'm going to tell you about a story that I've only written three chapters of, and I do not know if I'm going to write anymore because it's just so weird in my head. But I still love it to death, and I want to tell you about it. So here we go. Also, I'll warn you, there's no art drawn for this story yet. So you're not going to see a bunch of really cool art from Jay or Hannah on here about the characters or anything like that. Um, because I don't even think Jay or Hannah know about the story. If they do, y'all correct me in the comments, Jay and Hannah. Let me know. But I don't think I've told them. But anyway, I'm telling y'all now. Here we go. <clears throat> the story is called Apex Predator. All right, so this story is kind of a combination of the series Predator... Um, Tarzan, um, a little bit of Halo mix in there, like, it's a sci-fi story, it, a little bit of Dragon Ball Z now that I think about it, it it's kind of a sci-fi adventure, but also kind of a coming of age and an acceptance story, okay, so let, let me break it down, so what I did was I created this alien reptilian race, okay, I really like the idea of the predators, the, this race of aliens who travel around the galaxy and basically hunt things for sport to basically test their abilities. It reminded me a little bit of the Saiyans who test their power by combating and fighting other uh, races around the galaxy just to prove they're the best. But I created a unique one. I created something called the Vipar. The Vipar are a reptilian race broken up into four subgroups. You have the Lizar, which are basically your most common Vipar race. They basically are like lizard people, like Argonians from uh, the Elder Scrolls. Then you have the Serpine. They are more like snake people. They take on forms more like snakes. Not like Lamia, like what Mia is from Monster Masume. No, more like um, they have much thinner, lithe bodies. They have sharpened fangs behind their lips. Um, and usually they have very serpentine-like eyes. They also are much more uh, venomous than the others. You have the crocodilus, which exactly what they sound like. They are an alligator type of vipar. They're much bigger than the others, much more brawny, and they have hide that's very thick, and they're kind of the big tanky warriors of the vipar. And then you have the territors. The territors are basically tortoises. They are very slow, very weak physically. They're not really battle-hardened warriors, uh, they act as the council and governors and leaders of the Vipar. They run what's called the Council of the Shell, which is where the top five uh, territories and the oldest territories in all of uh, the in all the planet of Skeld, which is where they come from, uh, come together to make decisions that the Vipar should do. Now, hundreds of years ago, the Vi the the planet of Skeld was populated by Vipar who were pretty primitive in technology. Because they were a warrior group, they were pretty primitive. But they united and discovered another race on a moon right next door. Um, and this race is much weaker than the Vipar. I can't remember right now what I called them. I'll need to take a look at my notes again. Uh, I'm amazed that I remember all the names. I think it was called the Pumad, but I I'll need to take another look. I'll need to take another look. But they were a weaker but very technologically advanced race. When an alien invasion was coming, the Vipar were called upon by this weaker race to protect them, and they did. So in exchange, this weaker race builds ships and technology and weapons for the Vipar, and in exchange, the Vipar protect this weaker race, and they make a good alliance out of it. But now, using that technology they now have, the Vipar travel around the galaxy, but instead of just, you know, hunting just for the fun of it, they actually do some... Think of them as intergalactic police. They basically go around and hunt down wicked or dangerous aliens, like monsters or... Uh, parasitic aliens or dangerous individuals that's basically what they do because to them it's like there's no honor in just killing random creatures they wouldn't want to just hunt down humans for sport they'd say no 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 we'll hunt a human who's done a lot of bad you know because not only do, does killing him test us but also it brings justice which is even more honorable the vipar are very proud and honorable people now one day um the vipar the this vipar this chieftain named truva um, he's a crocodilus, and he is the chieftain of his small tribe, because the planet of Skeld is broken up into several tribes. Truva is taking two um, young warriors under his command to go to the planet Earth to hunt down a parasitic alien that's landed there and to wipe it out so that they can get practice for what's called the Trial of Venom, which is basically a coming-of-age trial that all Vipar warriors have to go through. So he's getting them practicing to hunt this parasite. While they're fighting and killing the parasite, they come, they end up killing it, but then they come across a small boy whose parents were killed by the, by the parasite. Now, they call, now the Vipar have a name for humans. They call them Hematov, which means warm-blooded. And when they see this little Hematov boy standing there, 
They're kind of like, what's this little kid doing? We ought to get rid of him. So one of them walks towards him. He, the kid suddenly pulls a knife. Now this kid's scared. Like he's pissing his pants. He's terrified. We're talking like maybe four or five years old, but he pulls a knife on them. He's obviously not strong enough. He's obviously not going to be able to fight them and he knows it, but he's still going to stand his ground. Now the other two, the two, the two Vipar, they laugh, but Truva, the chieftain is impressed. He points out there, the Vipar have grown soft lately. A lot of kids in the Vipar act, you know, snooty. They act like they act spoiled. They don't act like true warriors. This kid, this Hematov, Despite facing absolute damnation, absolute terror, absolute evil, and the parasite is still willing to stand up and fight. That's rare. So he decides to take this kid under his wing, name him his heir, and take him back to uh, the planet Skeld. He takes him back, um, names him Kai, which in their tongue uh, mean, I, I can't remember, gosh, I, it's been a while since I've worked on this story. I'm, I gave it a translation. I'll need to look back at my notes. I, I need to look back at this because I'm kind of like Tolkien, right? I like making languages. <laughs> That's one of the things that I enjoy doing. I'm not nearly as good. I'm not even close to as good, but I like making languages and different words that mean different things. But so anyway, gives him the name Kai. They get back to, uh, uh, the planet Skeld. He goes to visit his wife. His wife sees Kai. She's kind of like, what, what are you doing with him? And he explains, I think that he could make a very successful warrior. And she says, you are aware that this has never happened before. And he points out, there's no law that says that a Hematov can't become a Vipar warrior. And she goes, it, th sure, there's no law, kind of because this has never been anything that anyone's ever proposed before. Before you let him join the other Vipar children in training, you need to run this by the Council of the Shell. So basically what happens is he runs this by the council and they have to decide what they're going to do. Luckily, the head of the council is an old tor is an old territor named Jiha and Jiha is friends with Truva and he basically goes, you know what? It is unconventional, but uh, I see the, I see what you're trying to do here. So I'll tell you what, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to give this a shot. Now, everyone on Vipar is kind of like, what really are we actually doing this? So this is where it kind of gets its Tarzan roots because what Kai wants to do is he wants to grow up and learn to be a warrior the way his father wants him to be, but he obviously doesn't fit in. He is, um, a soft fleshed, warm blooded creature. And he is surrounded by, uh, uh, aliens that are trained to hunt and kill warm-blooded creatures like him. So he's easily outclassed by all the other kids. He trains incredibly hard, he works his butt off, he practices combat arts, but in every single practice trial, whenever they're running races through the jungle, he always gets left behind. Uh, whenever he um, is asked to do like a hunter stalker kind of job where almost like a game of tag, but in the game you're hunting through the jungle to find each other and you have to tackle and uh, beat each other he always loses because they can use their um uh it, the, the, they can use their pit viper like senses to smell his warm blood on the air so he always loses he always gets his butt kicked and he's starting to lose hope but truva and his wife really work to help him plus he makes a few friends one of them is a serpine girl named ashara and she takes a liking to him and tries to help give him tips and assistance wherever he needs it um, so he learns a few things, like for example, when they're going for runs through the jungle or going on mountain treks, he could try walking through the muddy marshes like they do, but he doesn't have webbed feet like some of them. He can't, he doesn't have the leg power to march through that like they do. So he takes to the trees, pulling a Tarzan, jumping from tree to tree. There's no law that says you can't. Whenever they go for races, he notices that there's this, um, little Territor kid that has to train with them because even the Territors have to go through basic training named Kruda and he will, and Never before in any of the child races has a Territor ever won. So Kai wants to help him, so he runs by carrying Kruda on his back. Kruda always says, I'm too heavy, I'll slow you down. He goes, I don't mind. So he keeps running with him. But by doing that, it makes him stronger and faster and tougher because he's going through all these different things to become better. He learns creative ways to combat the um, reptilian instincts. For example, during the hunting training exercises, in the past, they'd always find him because of his warm blood. So instead, what he does is he runs through the marshes and cakes himself in clay and mud so that it covers his heat. And so while they're wondering where he is, he tackles them and brings them to the ground. So like... He learns new ways of fighting. He learns how to combat them. He learns tricks and skills, makes specialized weapons from uh, lost teeth or claws. Um, he makes special armor for himself. Like he's working to be a standout warrior and he's ready to take the trial of Venom. And in the trial of Venom, he has a bit of a problem too. There is a um, other chieftain of another tribe named Grika 
Grika does not like Truva at all and wants his tribe to beat Truva's tribe in the Trial of the Venom. And since Truva's uh, tribe has a literal hematov, a human partaking in it, well, that just makes Grika want to go after him even more. So before they go on there, before they finish the Trial of the Venom, there's one last part of the Trial of Venom that has to be done. And so Truva asks Kai... You know, let's say that you pass the first phase of the Trial of the Venom, you win the combat uh, festival, the combat um, uh, thing. You have to hunt a specific creature out there in the galaxy. What will you hunt? Kai thinks about it for a while, and then he says, "There, I do have a target. His name's Rokash the Destroyer. Rokash is not just a creature, he's a pirate, a space pirate who travels around causing devastation and damnation for almost every planet he goes to. And the galaxy makes it a point to track his movements. Now, no Vipar has ever gone after him before because he leads a huge fleet of ships. But news has reached um, the Vipar that Rokash is planning on hitting Earth soon. So Kai says, look, I may not care as much for Earth as I used to since I've grown up here, but those, that's still my race. The Hematov are still my people. I want to try to help them if I can. Now, Truva is scared. Like, hold on. I thought you were just going to say you were going to hunt some kind of monster or animal in another world. You're going after a, a, a space pirate. You're going after Rokash. No. No, that's not a good idea. But Kai's pretty adamant. And plus, this is also upsetting to, Ashira, uh, to Ashara, the Serpine girl that was helping him, because she's starting to develop feelings for him. But she doesn't want to develop feelings for him because he's a Hematov, and that wouldn't work for obvious reasons. So it's kind of playing with this idea that there could be a romantic relationship there. There's also the reality that he's going after something way beyond what any other Vipar has done so far, but he's also doing it for very noble reasons, so there's no reason that he should be told not to. And then it all ends up with him eventually deciding whether or not he's going to go back to Earth to protect it, or if he'll go after Rokash directly. Like, it turns into this whole big thing. Now, okay, so now you kind of basically know the story and what I was planning, because um, there's a lot of intrigue there. There's even this part where Truva thinks about sabotaging Kai's chances to complete the um, trial of Venom so that he won't have to go after Rokash. But I, I don't want to give too much away. I've already gone on about this all enough. Um, so why did I make it? What were my big inspirations and why am I not continuing it? Well, I made it for a couple reasons. One of the big ones, though, is because I am so sick and tired of space stories like Avatar and the like that tell stories about humans interacting with aliens where the aliens are always shown as the super good, amazing uh, race that understands nature better than humans, and humans are just all evil, money-grubbing dirtbags. I wanted a story kind of like Tarzan, where a human can interact with the more primitive and more, uh, not I wouldn't say barbaric, but more warlike race like the Vipar, and in Tarzan's case, the gorillas, um, and actually not only learn to live with them, but thrive amongst them thanks to his own human ingenuity. Um, and I wanted to also sort of tell kind of this space opera where there's, you know, betrayals, there's uh, kind of political uh, back and forth, there's an actual hunt for an actual space tyrant, there's some romance there between two star-crossed lovers where one is literally an alien race that's cold-blooded, the other is a uh, human, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Like a father who is in love with his adopted son, no, not in love in a romantic way, ew, I don't mean it like that, I mean like he has come to love this human boy that he's adopted, um, and but he loves him so much he's scared to let him go off on a mission that could end in his death like there's a lot that I really wanted to explore with this um, I really love the idea that I came up with and why didn't I continue it um, well there are three reasons the first one being it was a very complicated story to write out as you can probably tell from me talking this whole time I'm passionate about it but there's a lot of complicated stuff involved and there were moments where I was kind of like, man, I, I feel a little overwhelmed by this. Uh, two, I started working on other projects. About the time I was coming up with this story, I was finishing up Monster Club, and Metamorphosis was giving me trouble, and all that kind of stuff. And I just kind of let it fall away, to be perfectly honest. I didn't really think about it for a while. And third, and this is probably the big one, as I've said before, I have ADD really bad. I get very distracted and forget about stories very easily unless there's something to keep me grounded and interested in the story. Usually what that is, is art. If I have friends like Hannah or Jay or in the past, Mika or others who drew pictures for the stories, it was often a good way to ground me and get me working on the story again. So, like for example, Monster Club, even after Mika stopped working on it with me, Hannah stepped up and drew a lot of really good art for it. 
that got me inspired to finish it. Um, and then of course there's Jay's and I work with Nomad. Jay is drawn. Jay draws like a different picture for Nomad constantly, so that keeps me very interested. Because Jay hasn't drawn anything really new for Troy and Frost for a while, I kind of got distracted and haven't thought about it for a while. You see how that works? I hate to admit it, but it is a weakness of mine. I get distracted easily, or I lose interest easily if I'm not constantly saying, Hey, uh, Raven, let's talk about the story. If I have someone who just talks to me about the story or works out the story details with me, even that could sometimes be enough to get me to say, Yeah, I want to work on this again. You know what I'm saying? Um, but because Jay and Hannah didn't seem all that interested in the story, and I, yeah, I remember now, I did talk to Hannah about it, but I don't think she was all that interested in it. And Jay, I think I told him, but I don't know if he was all that interested in it. Because there's no art or anyone who's really been talking to me about this story, again, it just kind of slipped away from me, if I'm being honest. But still, I really like the concept of the story. I'd love to sit back down and work on it. Um, if you guys like the story idea, let me know in the comments section. Let me know that you guys think it's a good one, and let me know if you'd like me to continue it. The first three chapters are currently on DeviantArt. It's called Apex Predator. I'll leave a link to it down in the description if you'd like to check it out. Um, let me know what you think. If you like the idea, let me know. Maybe I'll go back to it. If you don't like the idea, let me know, and I won't bother with it anymore. But that's about all I have to say about uh, this one. Thank you for joining me on the story sharing time. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care.